Hey everyone, this is software version 3.0 for the AR4 robot. If you go to anandrobotics.com and go to the downloads tab where you can find all of the software, it's all free to download. In the upper left here, we have the source code. Uh, most people probably just want to download the executable file here from this column. And then we have the uh, sketch files here. If you remember from the uh, last video, uh, last version, version 2.2, we added vision functionality um, and we added this vision tab so that, uh, you know, you can program the robot to pick and place objects just using uh, inexpensive webcam. Uh, in this version, there was some fairly significant updates, at least as far as the background uh, coding on the Teensy board. So I went ahead and made this a major revision to version 3.0. Uh, when you run this on your system, you'll want to make sure that you're matching the 3.0 sketch file with the 3.0 exe file. You wouldn't want to uh, try and run 3.0 with a 2.2 uh, sketch on your board. Um, but in this version, the primary thing that we've added is a 7th, 8th, and 9th axis. So we have um, additional external axes that um, the robot can use. Um, the other thing that we've done in this version of software is I fixed some issues with the um, with the uh, open loop mode. So previously, the HMI software was just programmed when these boxes were checked to ignore the encoder feedback from the Teensy board. Uh, that caused a few issues um, trying to run motors that didn't actually have encoders. So now the logic has changed so that when you check these boxes, it actually shuts down the the uh, code on the Teensy board to uh, completely ignore that there's an encoder there at all. So that fixed a couple of issues. And then um, the other thing that I dealt with was in Cartesian jogging, when you jogged in the uh, live jogging, when you jogged in the X or the Y direction, there was a little bit of drift. The uh, orientation of the wrist was off a little bit. So I fixed that. So those are the main things in version 3.0. The uh, previous software versions did have one additional axis and it was called the uh, travel track. I'd uh, called it, I'd refer to this axis as the, uh, the track axis. Uh, in this update, I've changed that to just be the seventh axis because now we've added two more. So I have the seventh, eighth and the ninth axis. Previously, I had just used the seventh axis for um, just for a track. I had the robot on a, on a travel track, which you've probably seen in, in many videos. I've had a lot of requests to have additional axes. People have uh, a number of uses for additional axes, including um, there's a lot of uh, stepper motor grippers out there, grippers like these that um, this one is a uh, gripper somebody made to pick fruit and it uses a, uh, a stepper motor rather than a servo or uh, pneumatics. Um, there's also these other um, stepper motor type grippers with soft fingers. There's a bunch of these out there. so. You know, that's a big thing that people have wanted to be able to have additional axes for. Um, also, cinematography is another big request that I get. Um, you know, a lot of people are using the robot to mount cameras to it to do filming, and they want to be able to have a seventh, eighth, or ninth axis to be able to control not only, you know, like a turntable or a travel track that the robot might be on, but then to be able to have mechanisms that use stepper motors to control the focus and aperture on their cameras. So that's been a, another big reason for having additional axes and adding these axes. To uh, control the seventh and eighth axes is, uh, you know, kind of the same as it was before. You can um, use live jogging. You can just press the button and it will jog as long as you're holding the button. You can also put it into incremental mode. And let's say that we wanted to move it in increments of 20 millimeters. We could have it in incremental mode. And then um, just each time you click the button, the axis will move in in 20 millimeter increments. And that's the same for, for all three of those axes. And now as far as um, uh, wiring these up and um, calibrating them, if we go to the config setting tab, I've added a 7th, 8th, and ninth axis section right here. And so what we have here is I can define the length of the axis. So I can put in my overall length. I can put in um, the millimeters per revolution of the motor that um, my axis, how I want to define its movement. 
In this case, I'm just using a uh, ball screw. And so that is four millimeters per revolution. And then I just need to put in my drive steps. So I have my current uh, drive at half steps, which is um, 400, uh, basically 400 micro steps. And so once those are in there, you can hit save and that'll save that to the Teensy board and it will calibrate that axis. And then um, as far as um, the step direction pins that it's set up for, uh, the seventh axis is still, I, I put some notes down here at the bottom telling you which step and direction pins each motor goes to. Um, axis seven is still uh, pins 12 and 13, just as it was before. Um, if we look at the manual the uh, in the uh, section for the schematics, I've got a little drawing here that shows the optional uh, seventh axis. And you can see that the uh, direction pin and pulse pin, the step and direction pins, are wired to pins 12 and 13. That's how they've always been, and I've left it that way so that uh, nothing changes for people who have already built the robot. Um, then for um, the eighth and the ninth axis, I had to move up to pins 32 and 33 um, for the eighth axis, and then pins 34 and 35 for the ninth axis. So that information's right here, so it's, uh, it's not in the manual as far as that... Uh, it's not shown here um, in the manual, but it is right there in the software, so you know which pins to hook it up to. Um, another thing that um, we've added in this version is the ability to um, calibrate the tracks. As you know with the robot, um, the robot calibration section is right here, and you can, as I've shown in previous videos, you can auto-calibrate the robot. And the robot will drive to each of its limit switches and calibrate each axis. So I've added that ability for the 7th, 8th, and ninth axis that wasn't there before. We can now install a, um, we can install a limit switch on the track. And you can see here I've installed a limit switch at the end of my uh, track. And then I can just click this uh, button here for auto calibrate axis 7. And what that'll do is it will... Um, drive the robot to that limit switch and it will calibrate the track to zero just as it does uh, for the robot itself. So now that it's done it says uh, joint seven calibrated successfully and if I come back to the main tab you can see it's driven to its uh, calibration point and the seventh axis value is uh, right back at zero again. And then as far as wiring on that we have, um, I've also put in these notes which pin to wire your limit switch to. So for the, the seventh axis, it's pin 36. For the eighth axis, it's pin 37. And for the ninth axis, it's pin 38. So as you can see here, let me open the manual. So in the manual, um, on approximately page 72, um, it goes over some details on wiring the, uh, the limit switches for the robot. And so for the travel track or external axes or anything, you know, for axis 7, 8, and 9, if you want to install a limit switch on them to calibrate them or to zero them, you wire your limit switch exactly the same way as you would for the robot arm. Um, so right here you can see that the two, um, the two, uh, normally open, normally closed uh, contacts on the switch. Um, I'm going to wire 3.3 uh, volts from the Teensy um, to this terminal. And then on this terminal here, I'm going to wire uh, that to the zero volt or the ground terminal on my Teensy board. And then this terminal on the limit switch, my common terminal is going to go to the switch or to the terminal on the Teensy board that's specified in the software. So if we look at the software, um, that's going to be that, uh, that terminal is either going to go to pin 36 for the seventh axis or pin 37 for the eighth axis or uh, pin 38 for the ninth axis. So basically you just wire the switches up the exact same way you have for the robot and just follow, follow these, uh, numbers here for which, um, pins to wire them up to. Now, you don't have to have a um, limit switch if you don't want to use the auto calibrate. You can also just um, run it to a hard stop or run it to a known position and then just 
click on set axis uh, to zero. So for example, if I was to jog my seventh axis and uh, I just jogged it um, in incremental to 20 millimeters, but let's say for example, I powered off that drive and, and rotated the motor shaft manually back to a zero position, I can just come in here to the config settings and hit, hit um, set axis seven calibration to zero. And it uh, shows here that the seventh axis has been forced to zero. And you can see here, we're back to zero on the value for our seventh axis. And then lastly, one other thing to take note of on the config settings, I did add a seventh, eighth and ninth offset to the calibration offsets. And what this does is if your limit switch, you know, isn't exactly where you wanted it or it's not calibrating to the exact position you want it to, you can put in an offset here. Um, so for example, let's say I wanted my axis to be five millimeters, uh, further forward when it hits the switch. I didn't want it to be at zero when it's on the switch. I want it to be at five millimeters. I could put five in there, hit save, and then hit auto calibrate axis seven. And it's going to go through the calibration process, run the uh, travel track up against the switch. It'll say calibrated successfully. But then if we look at its known value, it's going to offset it and start it at that um, five millimeter value that I put in my uh, offset and I could put in a negative value, you know, or anything that I needed to offset it. But in most cases, probably just leave that at zero. So now as far as utilizing the seventh, eighth and ninth axes as part of a program or being able to play those positions back, um, these positions are all piggybacked onto the robot positions. Um, and those can are added as part of either a joint move, an offset move, a linear move, or an absolute rotation of joints move, a move R. So each of these move types, a joint move is just a movement using all joints defined in the XYZ yaw pitch and roll. Offset is an offset of a joint move, just offset by a position register in the registers tab. And then a uh, move L is just a linear move defined in uh, XYZ yaw pitch and roll, but it uses the kinematics to make sure that the robot arm moves in a perfectly straight line. And then a move R is just a movement that's very similar to a move J. It's just defined in the joint um, rotation value rather than the Cartesian XYZ value. Um, but nonetheless, they all um, give you a way to utilize the external axes. So for example, if I click on move J and teach new position, you can see here that it has the robot positions, um, which currently I have the robot in kind of a home or an L configuration right now. And then joint seven is recorded at zero, joint eight is at zero, and joint nine is at zero, which is where they're currently at. Now, um, if I were to, for example, I'm in um, incremental mode, um, 10 millimeters, let's move uh, axis 7 to 10, let's move the 8th axis to 20 millimeters, and we'll move the 9th axis to uh, 30 millimeters. And now if I teach position on that, you can see here that joint 7's at 10, joint 8's at 20, and joint 9's at 30. So um, basically, you know, I didn't move the robot at all, but if I had, it would include that as well. So this could include a robot movement along with external axis movement, all coordinated together. Or if I want, I can just move, you know, only what I change is added to the movement. So if I was to execute that first move, and now you can see all my axes are back to zero where I taught that move, or if I execute the second move, you can see that all my axes move to 10, 20, and 30. So these moves can be either just the external axes or they can be the robot only or the robot plus one or two of them, whatever you want. So anything you put in here is what, uh, you know, is going to be played back. And it's the same thing for any of these. If I chose a move R in top position, it puts in a move R and the same thing, the joint, they're all defined in, in joint rotations, but, um, joint, uh, seven, eight and nine are just piggybacked on there. So. Anyway, that's how you utilize those joints in a program. So give that a try. Um, let me know if you find any issues or bugs. And thank you for watching.